Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we have looked at the various slip systems. Now it's time to get a little familiarized with these slip systems. So first let's look at FCC. We said that for FCC, this is the slip system where this is the glide plane and this is the slip direction. Overall, how many types of, uh, how, uh, how many 111 type of planes can you find in a cubic material? And the answer is four. What about 110 direction? And if you look closely, then you would see that there are actually six different variations of 110 direction. But, and here is a catch or basically any additional information which helps us to make uh, or organize our information. For each of the 111 plane, there are only three directions that lie. Three on a given 111 one plane. Okay, so for each of these 111, you will have three 110 directions, which also means that the one one, uh, the some of these 110 directions would be shared between 111 planes. And this is best described in terms of what is called as Thompson's tetrahedron. And if you do a simple search on Google, you would be able to find some images of this. And uh, although I said tetrahedron, what we are looking at here is a triangle. It is because it is drawn in 2D. Now, if you join the D with the D, if you cut this along these somewhere like this, This will ensure that you, you are able to join it. Similarly, over here, you will have to cut it like this. Now, this is a Thomson set tetrahedron, which is very, very powerful technique to identify the planes and directions in FCC systems. Now, if you connect, once you cut it, you fold such that D comes back to D and from here and over here. And therefore, what you will have is a shape like this. Now here, you can see that there are four faces. So the four faces represent four, one, one, one type planes and each of the face are bound by three edges. So the three edges represent the Berger's vector that are possible on the given slip plane. So clearly from this, for example, if you take this particular edge, which is shared between these two planes. So this particular Berger vector is common to both of these. And it uh, also tells you a lot about the dislocations. So if you have a screw dislocation with this Berger vector, then you know that the screw dislocation line vector is also along this, and therefore this can cross slip into either of this. So if it is moving here, it can also as well move into this plane. So this is giving you information about the slip plane, the slip direction, and also what are the possible cross slip that is possible in the FCC system. So this way, FCC system can be understood fully using this Thompson's tetrahedron. There are some additional information over here 
but we will get to understand those more later on. For now, it is sufficient to understand that this is uh, this tetrahedron will enable you to understand all the planes, slip planes, and what the associated budget vector. So now let's look at some examples over here. So let's look at this one. So this is a bar one, bar one, one plane, and the budget vector possible are. So you will have to add a by two. This is just showing the direction. So a by two, zero, one, one, a by two, one, one bar zero, and a by two, one, zero, one bar. And you can see that the dot product of these would come out to zero because these budget vector do lie on this plane. And like I mentioned that this particular, any of these budget vector you select will lie on two and exactly two slip planes. So for example, this one, a by two, one bar one zero will be lying on bar one, bar one, one, but also on one, one, one. And therefore this is dot product of this with this is zero as well as dot product of this with this is also zero. And therefore, if you someone tells you that, uh, let's say we try to solve an example where you are asked that this is the cross slip that is taking place in an FCC system and you have to identify what is the two, what are the two possible planes, then you can clearly identify. So let's say you have given cross slip. So basically this is double cross slip. You and the only thing this is given is that this plane is one, one, one. And you are asked to identify P1, P2, you are asked to identify U1, U2. Now it's very easy if you go back over here. So 111 is our plane. So 111 is over here. And uh, the possibilities with which it can cross slip are, so it can cross slip onto this one, it can cross slip onto this one, or it can cross slip onto this one. So the planes P1, or P2 can be any of these P1 or P2 and we will correspondingly U1, U2. So 1, 1, 1 can cross slip onto any of these, basically 1 uh, bar 1, bar 1 or bar 1, 1 bar 1 and bar 1 bar one, one. These are the three possible planes and you can as well take the negative of this. So if I say this, you, it is as well equivalent to saying this. And when this is the plane, then the only budget vector which is common to both of these is zero, one bar one. And we know that the line vector must be parallel to budget vector for cross slip. And therefore, this must be also the Burgess vector. This is the line vector as well as the Burgess vector where the cross slip takes place. So the U1 or U2 for this particular case, which is one bar one bar one should be equal to A by two zero one one bar. A by two zero one bar one or the negative of this, which is A by two zero one one bar. When we are talking about the other plane, which is uh, one bar one one bar. So this is the common one. And here the budget vector is one zero or the word common direction is one zero one bar. But of course the budget vector has to have that A by two or the negative of this, therefore bar one, zero, one. And for the last one, which is bar one, bar one, one, this, which is here, the common vector is one bar one, zero. For Burgess vector, we have, so this is actually for the U1, U2, we don't need this, but for Burgess vector, we would need this factor. So this factor, first, let me write the complete thing. So just to clarify, this is uh, Burgess vector part. For the U1, U2, you don't need this part. 
similarly over here. So when you are given a condition like this, you would be able to identify what is the combination of P1, P2, U1, U2 that is possible given this particular plane or any combination of this information. And it is all possible. And in, even without the Burgess vector, you can do the, even without the Thomson's tetrahedron, you can do this, but then you will need to do a lot of uh, multiplication, vector multiplication to see and cross check whether this is a dot product or not, dot product is zero or not, and so on. That is the, whether this particular Burgess vector lies onto this plane or not. So overall, this makes the task much simpler for us. Now let's uh, look at the BCC uh, slip system. So here we know that 111 is the closest pack direction. We said this is the closest pack direction. And unfortunately, here we don't have anything like Thomson's tetrahedron. But we do have a something which can give us partial information using a circle. So if you have 111 as the closest pack direction, then for each of this 111, and we know that 110 is the glide plane, but 110, and yes, uh, one more thing that I should now mention at this stage that 110 is the preferred glide plane, but for BCC, there are some more options available like 112 and 123. So depending on material, sometimes 112 and sometimes even 123 are possible glide planes. Now for a given 111, what you would find is that there are three possible 11 zero direction, sorry, three possible 110 planes. And uh, similarly, three possible 112 planes are possible for one given 111 direction. So if you have 111 direction, there are basically three different 110, three different 112, which can contain this 111 direction and six different one, two, three. Overall, 12 different possibilities. And like I said, unfortunately, we don't have any Thomson's tetrahedron, but we do have something which serves the purpose. So let's say you have a 111 zone axis is given as 111. Then you can draw the various planes so that normal to this is 111. Basically, you can draw the various planes. So for example, this is 1 bar 1, 2 bar 1. So this is one one two type of plane. This is zero one one bar. Then you have one R one bar one two. Then you have bar one zero one. And you also have bar two one one. And then you also have 0, 1, 1. And here I have only included uh, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 2. So there are only six different planes that are shown to you. And if you were to include 1, 2, 3 type of planes, then it will be a lot more dense. So even just from this, you can see that a screw dislocation in a BCC system will have so many possibilities. In the FCC system, it had only two possible planes to move on to a given screw dislocation. But in BCC, with only 110 and 112, you get two, uh, six different possible planes. And if you include 123, then there are 12 different planes onto which 
the uh, screw dislocation can move and it is not surprising that because of this uh, variation this is the trace of a screw dislocation looks as if someone has just drawn by hand and therefore it is also termed as pencil glide so i hope that we have gotten enough uh, acquaintance with the dislocations and the slip systems we have looked at the bcc and the fcc system and the particular ways where we can easily identify the slip systems for these two particular uh, crystal systems so we will end this chapter over here and then we'll come back with new topic in the next week thank you